Hey everyone, so I'm back with my next Beauty Basics video and this one is on contouring. Contouring is something that I prefer to do before blusher or highlighter just so that it doesn't muddy over any of those um, further steps once you get to them. There are two types of products you can use for contouring. You can use a cream product or you can use a powder product. It doesn't really matter which one you use. Generally, I mean, I don't really believe in these rules as such, but as a guideline, it's better to use, say, cream on maybe older or dry skin, and then uh, powder would be used on maybe more normal combination oily skin. But like I said, they're just basic guidelines. Don't use them as gospel. Now there are a couple of reasons why you contour the face or features. Uh, one is to add kind of a bit of life and dimension back into the face because when you um, even out your skin tone with foundation you do get quite a flat appearance afterwards because everything is the one colour um, and it's not quite true to life so you do want to add dimension back in that's obviously what contouring will do and also um, it is used to slim the face or to slim certain features of the face which is what most people use it for. Now I'm going to show two ways of contouring, uh, first with the cream and second with powder. The main difference to remember when contouring um, or between contouring with cream or powder is that when contouring with cream you do it before you set your foundation with powder because it's really, um, I mean it's not impossible to get a perfect blend of cream over powder. You always want to do that before you apply powder so you can set that afterwards and then when it comes to powder um, contour or matte bronzers or whatever you're using to contour with you do that after you set your foundation with powder. This way um, if you're using like a brown powder to contour with it's not going to go muddy and streaky over foundation it'll be over a nice powdered base so just remember that always use cream contour before powdering and use powder contour after powdering the base. I'm not going to go into face shapes I did a couple of years ago um, a video on contouring and like the face shapes and how to correct different um, things in respect to different face shapes and that so I will link to that below but for me just to give an example where I would contour would be my nose I have an extremely thin um, brow or nose arch here so it's quite prominent it's quite noticeable and then the nose, um, my nose tip um, compared to here would be on the bulbous side it is quite um, quite a big bit bigger it is about or more than twice the width of my nose bridge so that is something I definitely want to contour and make it look slimmer and then for the rest of my face I'm quite slim um, around my cheeks and jaw area so it's not really something I'd be concerned with but I have a widow's peak um, and my forehead goes up quite far either side of the widow's peak you don't always notice it because I have a lot of baby hairs there but that is somewhere else that I may contour now I'm just going to contour my nose with the cream today and maybe a little bit under my cheekbones even though I do have um, a slim enough face there's, I, 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 I'll still usually contour a little bit around the cheekbone area just because um, like I said it'll add a bit more dimension so I'm going to be using this screen face shading um, cream uh, this is S1 so it's their lightest shading cream it's just a really, really light brown. Now you want to go for something that doesn't have too much red in it. Um, when you're contouring very, very pale skin, you have to be very, very careful because it can look very muddy. So you definitely don't want nothing with red in it whatsoever. Try and keep it as top as possible, or taupe, and also very, very light. You don't want anything that's gonna to be too deep. So to start off with, you can get a small brush, um, just a regular kind of flat shader brush if you want first of all and then pick up some of your cream you can, you can use your fingers as well but this will work just as well so with cream you usually go with um, synthetic brushes and I'm just going to show you what I mean by contouring the nose so you want to use the contour on the areas where you want to make it look slimmer now immediately that makes my nose look slimmer but of course you're not going to leave a big plonk of brown on your face like that so you need to blend it out so you go into um, a little blending brush and you're just going to soften that up and blend it out so obviously I don't need to contour up around my nose bridge because it's already extremely thin up there um, it's just to balance out my nose because there's such a difference in the shape so I'm first going to blend it out down the sides and you don't really want to bring the contour onto the centre of the nose um, and then I'm going to lightly run it just over that line so there's no obvious line so I've roughly made that centre line 
so that it's not too much wider than my bridge nose and it just goes straight down but um, that's already definitely made my nose look a lot thinner. So that would be how I contoured the nose quickly and then you can just do the same for um, under your cheekbone area so to make your cheekbones seem a little bit more prominent to slim the face. Now of course you could do this with your jaw jawbone or anywhere where you need to slim. I just usually pop, you don't have to be too neat, you're just going to pop some of it under there because this blends out really easily. That's the good thing about a um, cream contour is that it easily, easily blended. You kind of have much more play time with it than you would with um, a powder or just it, you can play with it better in general. So I usually just pop it on and then you can use like a bigger blending brush. So this is my... Um, foundation brush. This is what I use to apply my foundation. It's the Real Techniques Stippling Brush and then you can use that to blend it in with the rest. So I'll usually bring it up around the temple. Make sure you really blend it into the hairline. That's very very important. And if you're unsure where to contour, suck in your face and you should see the hollows there. So can you, you can use your fingers as well just to blend everything out and do the same with the other side so I'll just show you with my fingers on the other side again make sure you get it right into the hairline and you don't want to bring it all the way down to the mouth you just want to bring it about halfway down Now, and so that's the contouring done just underneath my um, cheekbone as well. So you can see there that it has receded a little bit. You have that natural shadow, so it makes your face look slimmer. Now this is the stage where you go and set your base with powder. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to come back and just show a little bit of contouring with powder. Okay, so when it comes to contouring with powder, it's roughly the same rules as well as with cream contouring as well. The only difference really is, um, again, after you powder your foundation, but also, whereas I just kind of plonked the uh, contour cream down and then I blended it out, when you're applying a contour powder, you kind of have to blend straight away as you're applying it. You can't just plonk it down and then try and blend it out because sometimes it can be really hard to blend down something if you apply too much straight away. So one of my favourite brushes for this would be um, a small tapered brush. This is the actual contour brush by Real Techniques. It's a perfect shape. Um, it is tapered at the tip and it's not too wide so you're not going to apply too much product too soon. So where I would contour a lot of the time would be up into my hairline where um, you know, I have quite a sizeable forehead, but it is often hidden with hair, but it's still somewhere where you can contour a little bit. So again, just remember you want to contour where you want to make seem slimmer or you want to recede. You just want to make it seem a bit smaller. So up around the hairline for me. You can contour a bit around the temples if you want to make this area of the face seem a little bit slimmer. Again, if you were to contour under the cheeks, you just do the same way. make sure you blend it's really important to blend out any harsh lines as well so you don't want to bring it down too far roughly just like a triangle there and then again a lot of people will contour underneath their jawbone if they want um, to make their jaw or their chins a little bit um, slimmer so people with double chins will often contour here now you don't want to be left with kind of white brown white so oftentimes you'll apply a little bit of the same powder onto your neck just so that there's not so much of a contrast but you just use the tip of your brush and lightly apply it's much easier to apply a little bit and um, add on if necessary rather than apply too much and to have to take away that's going to be a nightmare to try and correct so just add a tiny bit at a time and then add on as necessary. So one of the shapes that I tend to go in would be this 3E e shape. So just like that and then the same on the other side. That's kind of a general rule of thumb again. Again if I was to contour with powder I'd usually use a little uh, blending brush like this which would be kind of your eye, eye blending brush and then just go down along the sides and carefully blend out. 
Some people like to add a contour underneath their lower lip. This kind of makes your lip look larger because it makes the skin underneath recede, making it seem that your lip is sticking out a little bit more. And of course, another place you can contour is your eyes. So this is kind of the most um, known or commonly known contouring area. So this is generally for people who want to balance out eye shape. So for me, where I have a very um, receding lid, so my eyes are quite deep set, and then my brow bone is more prominent, just to help balance that out a bit. I'll contour the part that is sticking out, so it's my brow bone. And then the part that is receding will naturally seem a little bit more, more balanced afterwards. But that's basically it. So the only things to really remember when it comes to contouring is apply a contour where you want your face to seem slimmer or any of your features to see, seem slimmer or seem less obvious. Um, or to correct something like me where it would be a bigger nose or if maybe you had a bump you don't like and you can just add a slight contour over it as well. Like if you have a bump in your nose, you can contour over the bumpy part and then you can highlight over the part you want to bring out. But I will cover highlighting in another video. And then the most important things about contouring is to use matte products. So don't use anything with shimmer or like sheen or anything like that because um, it's matte that you need. Matte dark products will recede, uh, light shimmery products will bring forward. So you do not want anything shimmery when it comes to contouring. So a lot of people mix up contouring and bronzing powders. There's absolutely no difference except for if there is um, kind of shimmer in your bronzing powders. Or sometimes bronzing powders can be much more red based and stuff like that um, to emulate like tans which usually look a bit more fake. But you want it to be as neutral a shade as possible so not too much red in it unless you have a particular deeper skin tone that would be naturally quite red based. But try and keep it uh, neutral, try, try and keep it um, well you have to keep it as matte as possible if you want it to recede and then besides that just practice and see how you get on so thanks for me guys Salon.